Hey everyone, my name is Dylan Adams and today's video is the one we've all been waiting for that I've gotten so many requests and messages about. What is fretting behind the slide and how do you start doing it? So, as you can tell, I moved. Um, that's part of the reason why I haven't posted a video in a while. And I kind of have a new setup going here, so I'm hoping that this will allow me to be a lot more consistent. I want to start posting way more videos a lot more often. And before we start talking about fretting behind the slide, real quick, I wanted to show you guys this guitar. If you don't follow me on Instagram, then you probably haven't seen this yet. So, this is the B&G Guitars Helena. and they are a boutique guitar maker out of Tel Aviv, Israel, and they reached out to me and were kind enough to send me this guitar. They didn't ask me to do a review video or a demo video or anything like that. They just said, try it out. If you like it, then just, you know, play it in some YouTube videos, Instagram videos and so on, play it on stage and it's yours. So I've been playing it for the last month or so and I'm really digging it. Two P90s, uh, sort of modernized wraparound tailpiece. It, uh, it's really light and resonant, has a great kind of vintage Gibson type sound, but it's got its own little thing too. It's actually a 25 and 1 8 inch scale length, which is unique. So it gives it a nice kind of snap to it and really nice upper fret access for slide. It's very finely crafted. I mean, you can tell that a lot of really precise handwork went into it. The neck feels great. It just feels really well made and has an awesome vintage style sound to it, which is what I go for. And I'll put a link to the guitar in the description of this video and I will say just to be completely transparent one issue that I did find with it is in stock form it comes with metal P90 covers and for my setup personally they were too microphonic to use in a live situation they would squeal at any sort of real gigging volume with my setup at least you know granted I do play through cranked tweet amps most of the time. B&G was extremely helpful and persistent and eager to, you know, solve this issue for me. And they, they wound me a couple custom sets of pickups. And ultimately, the only thing that we could do was put some plastic covers on it, which it still looks really nice if you ask me. But that's just something to be aware of if you're looking at this guitar. That one issue aside, it is a fantastic guitar. So most of you probably already know what I mean by fretting behind the slide. And You'll know that it is a major feature of a lot of modern slide players' techniques. You know, everyone from Joey Landreth to Ariel Posen to Chris Turpin of Ida May, Minnie Marks, Walter Druce to myself. But if you don't know what I'm talking about, then fretting behind the slide is exactly what it sounds like. You are, while you're playing slide, incorporating fretted notes behind it. So it's not playing fretted licks just while you have a slide on it is kind of blending the two together. So you're playing slide licks or chords and at the same time incorporating fretted notes with your free fingers. I'd say it's kind of the newest, but also not really that new <laughs> innovation in slide guitar. A lot of people are getting into it and it's causing a lot of people to get into playing slide guitar, which is really cool. Um, Casino Guitars actually just did a video talking about this and they mentioned me in it, which was very flattering and I'm honored. So. That was really cool. Thanks, guys. Fretting behind the slide is awesome because it can really expand your vocabulary on the slide. It can open up a ton of new possibilities, and it just is kind of a way to blur the line between slide guitar and fretted guitar. Now, how did this technique come about? Well, there is one name that you guys need to know, and that is Sonny Landreth. As far as I know, he was the first guy to really do this. I mean, I'm sure there were other people before him who were dabbling in it or doing kind of primitive versions of it, but Sonny Landreth was the first guy to really dive into this technique and hone it and perfect it and make it something completely his own. And his playing really is incredible. The first tune of his that you should check out is Congo Square. That really showcases his technique and 
how musical he is with it. And there's several amazing videos out there of him playing at the Crossroads Guitar Festival. That's a great way to really get a good look at what he's actually doing. So yeah, he is an absolutely essential person to check out when it comes to fretting behind the slide. And he's honestly the pioneer of it, if you ask me. Someone else who is an innovator when it comes to fretting behind the slide who you may not have heard of is Dave Tronzo. He is a professor at Berklee College of Music. I took one of his classes and he has probably the most unique avant-garde just pushing the envelope outside of the box slide guitar style that I've ever heard. He does some very, very crazy, very out there, but amazing jazz and world music or cultural music influence stuff. So him and Sonny, I would say, are the two players who initially inspired me to get into fretting behind the slide and incorporate it into my playing after I'd already been playing slide for probably five or six years or so. And it's kind of funny because when I first started diving into this technique, I wasn't aware of Joey Landreth, Ariel Posen, or anyone else who was doing this technique. So I kind of got really excited and I was like, whoa, like no one else is doing this and I'm going to change the world. And then not long after that, I discovered Joey Landreth and Ariel Posen. I was like, damn it. These guys are already doing this. <laughs> they beat me to it. But I quickly got over that and started listening to both of those guys' music and was just totally inspired. And, you know, both of them are absolutely amazing. And I'm lucky enough to say now that I'm friends with Joey and he's just an amazing dude. And I think those two are definitely the modern day heroes when it comes to this technique. And again, essential listening. Joey Landreth. All right. All right, so enough talking about it. How do we start learning this technique and start implementing it into our own slide playing? The first thing you need to make sure you can do is pull-offs and hammer-ons with the slide using open strings. So we're not gonna worry about fretting just yet. So what I mean is this, and I'm in standard tuning by the way. So it's the same thing as going, doing hammer-ons and pull-offs just with the slide. To do a pull-off, pretty much all you have to do is just lift the slide off the string. So for example, here I'm playing the E string, third fret, and then just lifting the slide off. That's all there is to it. Hammer-ons take a little bit more finesse and precision. You have to put the slide back down on the string without slamming down onto the fret and also without you know making the slide rattle against the string so that might take a little bit more practice but it's pretty much as simple as that just play like your normal just minor pentatonic whatever it doesn't really matter what notes you're playing right now we're just worrying about the actual technique and the reason why you need to learn how to do open string hammer-ons and pull-offs first is when I first started learning how to do this technique, nobody told me this per se, but something that helped me kind of wrap my head around it is I thought of it like I was playing the same thing as those open licks, but instead of letting the string ring open, I was grabbing it with my finger. So it's the same type of motion almost with your, you know, with the slide, but I'm almost using my finger as a capo on the string. So I'm kind of thinking of it like this. And this are the same thing. I'm just sort of grabbing the string with my finger instead of just letting it ring open. To me, that kind of can help you break down the actual motion of what your hand is doing while you're fretting behind the slide. And that leads me to when you're going to fret behind the slide for the first time, the important thing to remember is while you're fretting the note, you are lifting the slide up off of the fretboard. At least when you're playing single notes, you are lifting the slide just a little bit off the fretboard. And I'll cut in an overhead view so you can see, you know, kind of what I'm talking about from my perspective. There was an Instagram story that I did a while back, or I did sort of an AMA on Instagram where um, somebody asked about this. And I kind of mistakenly said that I tilt the slide more forward and don't lift it all the way off the fretboard. But I went back and watched some of my own videos and I kind of realized that that's not true with me. I actually do sort of lift the entire slide off of the fretboard just a little bit with most licks. If you saw that story, <laughs> then disregard that. The first thing that I did to learn to fret behind the slide was 
I would just play a you know simple minor pentatonic blues type lick, you know, just a you know three or four notes, just nothing crazy, without the slide, and I would try and recreate it with the slide, where the slide is sort of replacing the notes that I would have played on my pinky or ring finger. So I'll just play a very basic, simple lick here. Right, or you could play it. And now with the slide, what we're gonna do is, these two notes that I played with my ring finger, or the ring and pinky, I'm now gonna slide those. And the note that I played with my index finger before is gonna stay with my index finger fretted. So the first time you do it, just pick every note. Don't worry about um, you know trying to do the pull off thing just yet. Just go. So once again, whenever I fret that note, and play it, I'm lifting the slide off of the fretboard just a little bit, so. And then once you get comfortable with that, try and do it with a pull off. So start out the same way. And then without picking the third note, go. So it kind of died out there, but go. So that's going to sound like and there you go you've learned your first fretting behind the slide lick so the next one we're going to do is this so again we're just very very simple right now we don't need to do any kind of fancy licks or anything we're just trying to get this technique under our fingers so that one it's just these three notes here And again, just play it without the slide a couple times. Now we're going to throw in the slide where I played. So it's going to be these two notes here that I played with my ring finger. Now that's going to be the slide. And so we're going to play this one. Then pick this one, lift the slide up a little bit. Then pick the third note with the slide. So first time around, just go. And then once you get comfortable with that, try and do it where you don't pick that last note and instead you do a hammer on. So we're going to go. And like I said before, that one can be a little bit trickier to get the hang of because it requires a little bit more precision in how much pressure you're pushing down on the slide. So um, you got to be really careful not to fret out or not to make the note rattle. So we're going to go. Alright, for this one we're going to use both concepts, the hammer on and pull off. So this one is going to look like... So again, without the slide. Now with the slide, picking every note. And now we're going to try with hammer ons and pull offs. So we're going to start by picking this note, then do a pull off. So then pick that note, pick the next one, then do a hammer on. So slowly that's going to be. So that's the main part of it. And for the very end, I'm just going to kind of grab this last note here that I'm fretting with my index finger. So, so the whole thing is, so that last note is just kind of a little afterthought just to kind of, you know, close out the lick. So like I said, that is how I started teaching myself how to fret behind the slide. Just taking the most basic of, you know, minor pentatonic licks playing them without the slide, and then recreating them with the slide. So you might be asking yourself, what is the point of doing this? Like, at least when you're soloing, why don't you just slide all of the notes? And, you know, what is the point of doing this fretting stuff? Well, for me, 
I kind of think of it almost like an efficiency thing. Say I wanted to play a fast run like this. So, yeah, I could technically go... Look how much more frantically and just how much more I had to move my whole hand and arm just to make that lick happen completely with slide only. It doesn't really provide any benefit. It's just using more energy. It's less efficient. It doesn't sound as good. And it limits what you can play. I mean, yeah, if you're just trying to play traditional, then you might not need to fret behind the slide, but if you're trying to come up with new melodies and new lines, then it's just a more practical and more musical sounding way of getting your ideas across with the slide and opens up possibilities that just aren't there if you're strictly sliding only. And I mean, let's face it, it sounds cool. Like I said before, it's just such a cool way to kind of find your own voice on the slide and just come up with new ideas. So that's why I do it. And that's why I think fretting behind the slide is the future of slide guitar. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. This won't be my only fretting behind the slide video. I will release more in the future whenever I think of new concepts or come up with new, more advanced licks and lines that I wanna show you guys. Please like and comment on this video and subscribe to my channel. It really helps me out a lot. And I really am planning on being way more consistent with posting videos. My goal is once a week. It might take me a little bit to get there, but I really want to do this for real. So keep on the lookout for more videos from me. And until next time, keep sliding.